Breastfeeding and sleep, how are the two related? What are the facts, what are the myths? I thought we would have a little look into this one today. So, um, I think it's important straight off the bat to uh, mention that there is no reason why a breastfed baby can't sleep just as well as a formula fed baby. Um, and unfortunately, quite often people misunderstand this and they think that, you know, breastfed babies just don't sleep as well. It's not true, it's not true. Um, I'll explain why people think that in just a second, but I think it's really important for, especially new mums who perhaps don't know um, or, or, or hear all kinds of things and feel confused, um, just to understand that, that your choice to breastfeed or to formula feed is fine, whichever choice you make, you make the choice that's right for you and your baby. Um, but don't make a choice based around thinking that they will sleep better for one way or that, you know, with one type of feed to the other. Um, they are capable of sleeping just as well, regardless of which way you feed them. So don't beat yourself up if you're um, making the choice to formula feed. And don't also think that you're never gonna get your child to sleep if you choose to breastfeed. It's simply not true, it's simply not true. And when it comes to breastfeeding and formula feeding, it's a personal choice. And I fully support any mother's wishes or desire to feed in the way that is right for them. Um, and we don't know, you you know, nobody should judge that, I, I really don't think, because, um, we make decisions for our own personal reasons and nobody on the outside looking in can uh, fully appreciate what that person's reasons are for their choice. So I fully support uh, whatever form of feeding is right for the family. Um, but I want to just let people know that you can get successful sleep from babies that are fed either, you know, formula fed, breastfed, um, however. So I think that's, I just wanted to clear that up straight away. And it's unfortunate, I do sometimes hear from um, you know, struggling parents, they're really ch having challenges with sleep and, and they've been told that their child isn't gonna sleep very well until they stop breastfeeding. And that's a sad thing. I really wish they, they weren't told that. And I don't really know why they do get told that. It's happened on a couple of occasions and um, I'm not sure why that advice is lingering around out there. Um, it's not fair for mothers to feel like they need to give up breastfeeding just to get good sleep from their child. It's it's not true either. So um, yeah, I hope that puts that one to bed, <laughs> for want of a better phrase. So why do people get that mixed up and where does that stem from? Well, the fact of the matter is formula um, milk is uh, thicker and it's more condensed, it's harder for digestion. So it will take a baby longer to process formula than it will to process breast milk, typically speaking. So for that reason, it sometimes um, sustains them longer. And if they're sustained for longer, then they may sleep for longer. And if they sleep for longer, then they're not going to need feeding so often in the nighttime. And that's where the theory comes from. However, <laughs> there are some flaws with this. Um, whilst I'm that you know that's that's a fact and it does sustain them for longer, that does not mean for one second that your breastfed baby can't sleep just as well. So here's the thing: with that theory, we are then assuming that the child is waking due to hunger. If the child is waking, or the baby really is waking due to hunger you should feed it. <laughs> um, if a baby's hungry, feed your baby, of course. So by thinking, oh, well, I'll sustain them for longer with formula food and then, you know, that formula milk, and then I won't need to feed them as much, that may be so. If that's right for you, then I don't judge you. Um, but you shouldn't do it to get sleep from them. Um, I hope that makes sense. So what I'm saying is if the wake-ups are happening because of hunger, feed your baby, but it may well be that those wake-ups are not happening because of hunger. They may just be purely a little unsettled and in need of a bit of comfort, a bit of support and a bit of a cuddle and some help to get back to sleep. And the two actually can be unrelated. Um, very hard to see that when you're in the midst of it and you're overtired and you, you know the assumption is my baby's awake and they're crying and they must be hungry. Feed them. Not every waking might, you know, doesn't, every waking may not necessarily be because of hunger. I know that's really hard to determine, but it's true. So, um, 
you shouldn't resort to formula feeding as a means to get your baby to sleep longer. Um, if you're if you have a breastfed baby, for example, that's been um, exclusively breastfed and you decide that, um, well, okay, I'm going to do a formula before bed and, uh, or a formula in the night to try and get them to sleep longer, what you could end up doing is causing more sleep problems and actually worse because you, a baby that's not used to it may actually struggle to digest that. That milk might sit um, and be more painful. They may have digestive discomfort, which might wake them and cause them pain. <laughs> so. It's not a solution, particularly in a case like that, which is why I, you know, I really try to um, stress to people that you shouldn't try to feed a baby up in any way, formula, breast, um, some of the other crazy things people do, just to kind of fill them up and tank them up. Babies naturally actually try to tank up a little bit in order to go a longer stretch of sleep. That's what cluster feeding is all about. That's why you sometimes see that early evening cluster feeding. It's their own natural way of going, hang on, I need a bit more. I'm, I'm, I want to go a long stretch here. <laughs> and that's that's a natural thing. And they, they do that, that. You'll see them do that of their own accord. It's not something you should force upon them. Uh, yes, good feeding, feeding rhythms are um, important and helpful and if you can get into the practice of feeding upon waking rather than feeding ahead of a sleep, then that too is going to set up some really good rhythms, not just to the um, feeding, also to the sleeping. You know, feeding upon waking, usually you'll get the, uh, a good feed from them. They'll do well. They'll take on board a nice amount rather than snacking. Um, and also you avoid, um, well, any digestive discomfort going down for a sleep and you avoid the association of needing to feed to get to sleep. So some great rhythms can be established around feeding and sleeping really early on. You can start to um, help to shape things and, and get into those rhythms really um, gently and gradually. But what you shouldn't do is try and feed them up or go, well, we must have to have formula in order to sleep well. It's just simply not true. <laughs> so what can you um, breastfeeders do to try and get your babies to sleep longer? If you're thinking that's all well and good and I completely understand what you're saying, um, but I'm a breastfeeding mum and I agree with what you're saying, so I, I, I'm not ready to give up breastfeeding, but my baby wakes every couple of hours and I, you know, and they're seven months old and they shouldn't be and I just want them to sleep longer. Well. <laughs> If that's the case, then you will need to check out um, a previous episode where we talked specifically about little ones who wake every few hours in the night and are over the age of six months. Have a look at that because that, that, that will give you some huge tips and uh, hopefully answers on that one. But sticking to the topic of this episode and the feeding side of things, what you can do there really is just start to do that feeding upon waking. So make sure um, in the morning, they have a good feed, they have an activity time or whatever they're going to do, and then sleep, you know, nap time comes along. Um, after the nap, feeds come in and, and so on. That's, that's the rhythm you want to go for. Try and separate feeding and sleep a little bit. Of course, at bedtime, the rule does change. You're going to have that last feed before bed, but you can make a slight separation between the feed and going in to the cot. So whether that's looking at a little book or a picture or having a song or just something that your baby knows comes after the feed and before the sleep, just something, anything in there um, to get them used to something that goes there and, and avoid them going, oh yeah, feedy time and now I go off to sleep, you know, just something that separates that will also help. And the reason why that will help is because then they will practice and get better and better at settling to sleep happily and confidently without using the feed to get them there, which means you won't get those unnecessary wakings in the night where they're looking for your help. When they're looking for you for a feed, totally fine, that's normal and understandable if they are of an age where there is still hunger in the night and they need it, absolutely. But you may find there are also, or alternatively, wakings that aren't really for a feed, it's actually for a, come and help me get back to sleep, I'm awake and I don't know what to do, and that too, very, very common, very, very normal. The trap that we often fall into is mistaking those ones for hunger and then feeding unnecessarily. That's the, you know, we've all done that, I'm sure. It's a common mistake and, and because it's so hard to determine, it's so difficult to know which is which. 
Um, so work on that. Try some different settling um, techniques. You'll soon get to know which ones are hunger and which ones aren't because you'll see the difference. You'll see the ones where, oh, okay, look, my baby is trying to go back to sleep. Maybe it's not hunger. And then they go back to sleep and they sleep for another few hours and you think, well, there we go. It definitely wasn't hunger. Or they try really hard, they go back to sleep, but they're awake again within 10, 15 minutes. Perhaps then that one is hunger. You know, just, just try. You're not, you're not forcing them um, to do anything beyond their capabilities. You're just, you know, giving them some other soothing, see what happens, see what they need. If they're hungry, you feed, of course. So hopefully this gives you a bit more clarity around um, breastfeeding and sleep and the links there. And really um, my biggest uh, mission with this episode is to reassure breastfeeding mums that you do not have to quit breastfeeding in order to get your little one to become a good sleeper. You really don't. If you want to, that's fine as well. Absolutely, that's fine. And you know, there are ways you can safely and effectively make that move as well. That's fine. But if you don't want to, please don't feel like that's the only way. It really is not. It's not the only way. Um, it, it, it's not the solution to sleep. If you want a solution to sleep, then I'll help you with that. And hopefully this episode has. So there you go. Um, breastfeeding and sleep, how the two are related. And hopefully that's given you some inspiration on that topic.